Here we go. <laughs> You're live. Okay. Welcome to the great TypeScript debate. Woo! <laughs> so this is what I hope is the first of many JavaScript debates at BrizJS. The idea is to get a little bit more interactive content and to get two sides to any particular issue rather than just someone giving you their picture. So uh, for those of you who are not familiar with TypeScript, it is an open source language developed and maintained by Microsoft. It's a syntactic superset of JavaScript that adds static type checking. And tonight's big question is, why though? So why would you use it? Is it useful? Is it just going to get in your way? Why is it awesome? Why is it not? So in the red corner for the affirmative team, we have the legendary Josh Wolf, TypeScript aficionado. Thank you. And in the blue corner for the negative team, we have Corey Nunn, who I think the Twitter byline says it all. Ooh, why do you use a wheel someone else invented? And pretty much JS, pure JS. <laughs> and I'll be moderating, so trying to keep them from killing each other. So let's keep it clean, guys. Remember, there's a code of conduct. And uh, hopefully, that's <laughs> no, alright. Uh, hopefully, we will get some interesting perspectives on this issue. So, the rules of the debate: you will each have seven minutes to present your side of the story. We'll start with the affirmative, and then the negative will follow. Then there'll be some debate. So, questions from the floor. If you want to tweet, if you don't want to admit to your question in person, you can tweet at BrizJS, and we'll be monitoring that. Uh, so we'll have some, some questions, some discussion, and then towards the end, five minutes before the end, we'll have two minutes each to wrap up, present your final arguments, and then we will cast our vote by clapping. So whoever gets the, the loudest applause is declared the supreme ruler of <coughs> Bruce JS for tonight. Of what? Well, of Bruce JS. Of what? I don't know. What? Bri yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bruce, Bruce, Bruce JS. Bruce JS slash TS. <laughs> Okay, so without uh, any further delay, let's get the affirmative team up. Oh, and by the way, a minute before your time, I will I will clang on my empty beer bottle. So. <laughs> Yo, Fraggle, Fraggle, Frizzle, Franken, Stizzle, Manizzle, all up in the his house with this shizzle, you feel me? You want to be me, the legendary Josh Wolf, as seen on the internet. This Good evening. This will be easy. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> we could switch uh, this thing over to my computer, that'd be great. <laughs> <clears throat> You guys can see? I'm pleasant to this uh, thing here. That thing, yeah. Great. Okay, so from Monday, I'm the legendary Josh Wolf, as seen on the internet. Do not adjust your television sets. This is actually happening. I know I look different in person, but it really is me. From Monday to Wednesday, I work as a legendary recruiter at Just Digital People in the digital space. Thursday to Sunday, I'm an open sorcerer at Magic Craft, the world's number one platform for teaching kids to code JavaScript in Minecraft. seconds of my time. Okay, TypeScript, make JavaScript great again. I program in TypeScript because I'm an adult. And I do most of my programming in, I may not look like it, but it is a fact. Um, I do most of my JavaScript programming in the world's most widely deployed JavaScript application server. Minecraft! Okay, so, <clears throat> programming in TypeScript. As an adult, why would you use TypeScript? Kids don't like to brush their teeth. They don't like to go to school. They don't like to write tests, documentation, or use types. Um, so we teach kids how to program in, uh, in, in this web browser here. Now, let's have a look at this basic spell that we teach them, Valaro. We put the documentation right where they need it, because how else are you going to know what to write unless you've got documentation, right? 
So we've got some documentation here. It's got a little spell that they can put into their little web browser here. So they can go to use spell like this, and then they're going to copy this one over here, the example. They're going to say fly, and then they're going to type in magic dot. Wow, it's like magic. It's documentation exactly right where you need it. How does it do that? Amazing. It's like magic. It's typing it's from TypeScript. It's reading the TypeScript declarations and it's inserting the documentation exactly where you need it. It's like um, they say about typing, it's like micro tests and documentation. And the micro tests and documentation that your tools can understand in the context of the code that you are writing, which is what static analysis of code is all about. So for kids, or you know, junior programmers, or people who are unfamiliar with the code base, or yourself when you go back to maintain some code a year after you wrote it and you haven't touched it since that time, wow, it's all there. Isn't that amazing? I know, right. Okay. So then we just type in this, and there it is. There's the method. I just save that. Wow. I go here. So I go to Minecraft, type cast fly. Kids come in here, they type uh, in here, they type cast fly. Hey honey, I'm right in the middle of my talk. I'll, I'll talk to you later. Sorry, that's my wife. Um, <laughs> look, magic. Magic happens. Amazing. This is far out. I can't fly in the air. Look at that, that was amazing. Didn't have, hardly have to know anything, right? The, the computer can basically teach the kid how to do it. Now, what happens if they accidentally type in the wrong thing like that? Hmm. It's a very, um, sorry, I can't talk right now. Um, look, it doesn't say anything's wrong. How can it know? Cast fly. And I go back here and I cast my fly spell and it blows up at runtime. At what a bummer. Yeah. Runtime. Magic Valare is not a function. It doesn't exist. But look what happens when I change my spell editor from JavaScript to TypeScript. Wow, look at that. What's that? Oh, property Valare does not exist on type magic. <laughs> now you see, the thing about it is that it does linting in the JavaScript mode, but it doesn't understand the code that it's actually looking at, right? Now I put that in there, fixed. Amazing. Yeah. So I program in TypeScript because I'm an adult, and that means that I'm concerned about children. Like, I have a son, right? You don't really worry about children when you're a kid yourself. Like, if you're a five-year-old, you wouldn't leave a five-year-old to look after your eight-month-old baby, would you? No. But, you know, we go through this kind of stage of evolution where we're an adolescent. And we're kind of functionally equivalent to an adult, but we don't really have the level of responsibility that an adult has, right? So, you know, my son, for example, he's 15, he's here. He can do most of the things that I can do, but he doesn't have to pay rent. He doesn't have to pay the electricity. He doesn't have to pay taxes. He doesn't have to worry about things like car registration. And we all like to complain about those kind of things and how much those systems are broken. But if we didn't have those systems, well, this society wouldn't run very well, right? And we like to like rag on types and that kind of stuff. But the reality is that the browser and the engine that actually executes my JavaScript was written using statically typed languages by other people who are kind of like adults compared to the programming that I do inside of, right? But the thing is that our applications are becoming so complex now in JavaScript. They're becoming so big. We're maintaining these huge code bases for such a long period of time. We've got so many people working on them over such long periods of time that really we do have to become adults about what we're doing, right? And we don't like to write tests. We don't like to write documentation. We don't write, like to write types. But yeah, look, that's just what we have to do to be responsible kind of adult citizens of the programming world. And um, for that reason, TypeScript. We'll make JavaScript great again. One minute? One minute? OK. You can just imagine this picture behind Corey while he's um, getting his talk. <laughs> <laughs> One minute. OK, the big data, big heart hackathon, I'll tell you about that afterwards. But there you go. That's why I use types, because I'm an adult and because you know my program is not just about me anymore. It's about the kids. Somebody think of the children. <laughs>
Bruins could have left off for adults. That's good HDMI. Uh, unlike Josh, I'm not going to uh, disparage the other presenter. That would just be um, childish. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that would, um, you know, hang out the other. Uh, oh! <laughs> I'm Corey. I'm also a parent, so I don't know where you're going with that, but anyway. Um, I work for these guys at the moment, Patient Zero. They're pretty cool. They take your problems and make them our problems, and I solve them for you. Pretty sweet. Uh, they also use TypeScript. Oh, really? Yeah, I know. <laughs> where did my presentation go? There it is. <laughs> How, how the fuck do you make types worse than than no types? Anyway, so obviously the the assumption here that was, was going to be that Josh had was going to be myself versus types, but it's not. My I actually think types are okay um, occasionally, especially when they're in someone else's code. But uh, generally, I don't think they're that bad. Uh, TypeScript, though. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let me start with this slide though. <laughs> I'm definitely going to lose this debate. Um, I've actually been, I've never been stressed, more stressed coming up with a presentation than this one. I couldn't really put my finger on it until this afternoon, but I realized the reason I'm finding it so hard to figure out an argument against TypeScript is because TypeScript doesn't have any tangible arguments. Like, which is really easy for me to, to shit on promises because they're like broken and don't work and like they're, they're so obviously flawed and they're like, oh, it does all this shit and they don't, they just suck. Whereas TypeScript's like, they just, just like to say, what are the good things about TypeScript? Type safety. And you're like, okay, explain. And you're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, okay, well, what makes it better than, than flow? Is it the fact that it discovers fewer type errors than flow? Is that what's better about it? Oh, okay, no. Is it that it makes the development faster? It really has to make it faster. Go away. <laughs> it's like the way, it, this, this whole, this is why I find it's really hard to, it's really hard to lock it down in a debate format. Anyway, so here you go. Here are the benefits. Type safety, developer activity, classical inheritance, and IntelliSense. Uh, type safety um, doesn't give you shit unless you write your types. And even if you do, I mean, it, as far as I'm aware, it pretty much only find, when I say as far as I'm aware, like I just said, I work for a company who does TypeScript and I write TypeScript at work. So I'm not just coming at this from like, oh, I've never done it and it's shit. I'm doing it every single day and I hate it. Um, it doesn't find anything a linter can't find or your very first test that you ever write wouldn't find. Um, I'm assuming, who here, put your hands up if you don't write unit tests. Big really, big three crowd. people. That is a that's ballsy. Put your hands up there. Um, so, <coughs> other than those three people, what what's the point of TypeScript? Every single possible problem that you would ever be that would ever be discovered by TypeScript would be found by your tests, unless you wrote no tests, basically. So, what's the point? What are you doing? You're just like wasting time writing all these types and stuff for no reason. Developer activity. Well, the only way you get benefits out of TypeScript is to write obscene amounts of typing. And I mean like it's an interface for everything, like every little object. I got two properties on it. Oh, better write an interface for that. What, what's the point? Like it's just this massive waste of time. Yeah, you get free documentation, except no, you don't because you had to write all the typing stuff for it and it's harder to write than just like actual documentation. Yes, admittedly it's linked to it, but then again, you know, you can infer that sort of stuff. Flow can infer that sort of stuff, for example. Classical inheritance. Well, it's shit anyway, so yes. IntelliSense. <laughs> Uh, do I do I actually like legitimately? Who put your hands up if you think classical inheritance is the best inheritance? Wow! I want that one easily, didn't I? Nobody thinks it's the best inheritance because it's not. Obviously, IntelliSense. Uh, there are multiple tools that can do IntelliSense without TypeScript. You can it can they, all this type of information can be inferred. The code JavaScript runs. It runs with types. Once it infers them. So obviously it can be done, and it is done in multiple different plugins for pretty much every single editor you could possibly imagine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very adult. <laughs> so there you go, all of its benefits gone. So, it's drawbacks, slightly longer. 
It's not JavaScript. WordPress.js. Slow to write because it actually is. It takes you longer to write it. Um, you can't just like you know quickly prototype out some code and be like, don't worry about some stuff that doesn't quite work yet because TypeScript will go, you screwed this up. And you're like, yeah, I don't really give a shit. I'm working over. He's like, no, this property, you screwed it up. I'm like, but I don't give a. F I just want to write my code over. Here. Just, run, uh, just let me write friggin' code. I don't give a shit if, if something breaks over here. I'm not in the middle of doing it. Plus, you've got to write types for everything, or 99% of the time, you just put any. Because this is what you're like, ah, oh, well, this could take, this could, I could refactor this, and it would take the next hour, or I could put any here. <laughs> so you do. Every single, has anyone here done TypeScript? Put your hands up. Keep your hand up if you've never typed any. Bullshit. I've seen you type any. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's hard to debug, to debug. Oh, but hold on, you've got like the type, the source maps and stuff. Yeah, great. So your compiled code though, those values, those identifiers in your compiled code are not in your console output. So if you go to Chrome and you're like on a breakpoint and it's like, foo, you get a console and you type, foo, it'll go, what the fuck is foo? You're like, what do you mean, what is foo? It's right there. You're like, no, that's foo underscore three. Thank you, awesome. Uh, compilation step, that's shit. I mean, if you don't agree with that, then I can't convince you. I'm using it sometimes wrong error messages. Uh, if you spell something wrong, it'll point you at the wrong file that you spelled it wrong as, rather than like the thing that you actually screwed up. Uh, the type system is like, and you can't type multiple things. You can't type, for example, uh, functional programming stuff where you have multiple length arguments and an end argument on the end, that sort of stuff. Uh, basically, never picks up anything that you couldn't pick up just with the, simply running the code once. It gives you a false sense of security because people's like, oh, you don't you just got types F, you're so good, you never have errors, and then you always have errors, or you just like lazily commit shit and oh, pass TS, it must be good. Uh, every single dependency needs a type definition or it doesn't do anything. Uh, Unquantified is high velocity hand wave, low bugs hand wave, doesn't actually do any of those things. Uh, how to use it? You start in it in uh, Korean.net. You be forced to use web technicals because it's the future. Ugh, JavaScript is so shit. I don't know how you use it. Okay, I'm done then. That's it. I told you I was going to lose this debate. <laughs> okay, thank you. So now is the interactive part of the debate. So it is your chance as audience to tease out the details of these two arguments from our two speakers. <laughs> so do we have any questions? Really? <laughs> yes. Why TypeScript overflow? Damn fucking straight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great question. It's not really um, the subject of tonight's debate. I use TypeScript because I started programming in 95 uh, professionally in Born Delphi. It was written by Anders Halsberg. He's the guy who went on to do C Sharp and then to do TypeScript. TypeScript came out in October of 2012, version 0 0.8. It had been uh, an internal use inside Microsoft for two years before that. I started using it the moment it came out. Flow wasn't released until much later, so by that stage, I already had static typing. Or too short than that. Why the fuck would you use TypeScript over Flow? That's what you just said, pretty much. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do we have any other questions? I can't believe it, we've just sold it. Come on, alright, okay, so, so how, how are we tracking so far? Who's, who's in the TypeScript camp so far? In show of hands? Who's in the JavaScript camp? Which is also inside the TypeScript camp, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike Corey, we don't, uh, we don't exclude anyone. So, uh, it, it seems to me like we might need a little bit of rebuttal from the TypeScript camp here, because you're, you're kind of trailing behind sure. here. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Corey says that, you know, you can find it by writing tests, and then in the next breath he says, but I don't want to waste my time writing types. But They're tests. Type. Types are tests. They're also documentation. They're a specific type of test, specific type of documentation. Can we get the uh, smoking gun on the screen, please? <laughs> uh, not that one, this one. Okay, so this came out yesterday. This is a large scale study of all the code in GitHub and the code quality, number of bugs per lines of commit. Um, I direct the attention of the, uh, the jury to this line here with JavaScript, an application code analyzer, database, framework, library, middleware, and overall. 
and you can see that darker is more bugs percentage per lines of code and compare that with the line for TypeScript which is much lighter and as you can see less bugs in uh, TypeScript code checked into GitHub. I mean look, I might have my opinion, Corey might have his own opinion, but the numbers don't lie folks. TypeScript code is higher quality at scale and that's what TypeScript is for. Why is C-sharp so buggy? <laughs> <laughs> Come back uh, next month to find out. <laughs> Corey actually started as a C-sharp programmer. That's actually true, I did. That's why I fucking hate TypeScript. <laughs> oh my god, it's... It actually gives you like flashbacks of my C-sharp days, and that's that's probably one of the big reasons. It's because it's like, I, I learned how to write um, code in C-sharp. Uh, and then I learned how to actually write code when I went, moved to JavaScript, but found that you can do this crazy thing like make a function. Oh my god, unbelievable! <laughs> um, I actually find it found a, a really common pattern, uh, especially from like .NET developers. And I'm, I'm truly not just from .NET developers. Some of my best friends are .NET developers. Um, <laughs> but there is a if you if that's the only thing you've ever done, you, your your world view and your, your your code mental view of how to write code. It's kind of restricted, like everything's everything's class, everything's like an object with a, with a method on it, everything's like that. And that's cool in that land, and it works in that land, but as soon as What's you move somewhere else... What's TypeScript? This is just, excuse me, I'm a functional programmer. I, I got the microphone. Let me see my microphone. And what that got to with TypeScript is, uh, I see a lot of businesses that have come from a .NET background going, oh, well, we've got all these .NET developers, rather than just like hiring JavaScript developers to do some JavaScript web applications. Or we'll just use TypeScript, and they're like, "Yeah, that's great." And then they use it, and then they can't write it. Like, they just don't know how to write it. Things like asynchronous flow control, they can't do it because I mean, C sharp does it all for you; it's all just automatic. Um, it's, it, all concepts of, of web development, they don't understand, but it looks like they sort of understand because they've got a type check, they feel safe. It's, it's like the safe choice. Like, no one gets fired for uh, for choosing for choosing um, IBM. No one gets fired for choosing TypeScript. Of course not. But I mean, you still end up with. Microsoft level software. I mean, does anyone ever use Microsoft web applications? They're terrible. They're, I don't see it. Like, the first thing is you look at TypeScript and you go, made by Microsoft. You go, okay, done. Like, just leave because they can't write <laughs> web software. It's terrible. It's just so atrocious. I'm sure you guys like to rebut on that. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, it's a, just a misconception. It's a complete straw man. Corey is obviously traumatized by his experience with C Sharp, right? And he just can't get over it. But here's the reality TypeScript is no longer just a Microsoft technology. I mean, that thing is an open source project on GitHub. You can contribute to it, and there are literally tens of thousands of committers in that project, most of them outside Microsoft. It's not a Microsoft technology. It's an open source technology from the community, for the community, once someone think of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any other questions from the audience? Yes? So in five years' time, has TypeScript subsumed JavaScript, or are we still kind of cut the so I'm going to flashbacks to CoffeeScript right now. Yeah. Do you guys remember CoffeeScript? <laughs> remember that? Oh, it was the next thing. Oh my god, everything's the next thing. Except for JavaScript, which has been here for 20 years. Look, TypeScript doesn't cut the community down the center because TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. So this JavaScript community, we're inside the TypeScript <coughs> community, right? I mean, that's the fallacy of the, the you know, the, the traumatized C-sharp camp that, oh my god, TypeScript, they're coming for my, uh, my freedom. I'm going to take it away. Um, but look, in five years' time, the thing with TypeScript is they never do any extensions over JavaScript. There are lots of things we've been waiting for in TypeScript that they just won't do because they're like, we need to wait and see how it gets implemented in the ECMA um, standard before we can do this because we don't want to do an implementation which effectively forks the code base. And so they've always done everything in a way that's like backward and forward compatible between TypeScript and JavaScript. It's a very deliberate design decision and it means that TypeScript does move slower than it otherwise could. But it means that even after like five years now, TypeScript and JavaScript are still, you can run any valid JavaScript as TypeScript. So in five years time, no, there's not going to be a fork. We're going to be together. You're so nervous to hand the microphone back. It's so funny. Um, yeah, except that, of course, if you use require in a file, it doesn't work. It does not work because you need to install a different thing, apparently. I only found this out today. Actually, I was finding it really hard to repair because I couldn't even get the most basic of TypeScript files to actually run at all. 
And I actually <laughs> came in today, sat down and Josh and went, how the fuck do you make this work? He's like, oh, I just installed this thing. I'm like, how would I know that? He's like, oh, you just got to do all the research and that. Okay, but I could just write some code instead of this. Did, go, go on. Sorry, didn't you say that you knew how to use TypeScript and that you do it professionally? <laughs> I mean, come on, like, like any technology, you actually need to know how to use it to be able to use it. That's true. Uh, yes, that's true. I, I, I work in an existing code base. I didn't set up from the very start, so I don't know all the million, oh, billion oh, oh, set up like, oh, steps okay. for that. Okay. It's one of the reasons I avoid things like Babel and general compile steps, because once you get a craft just right the first time, it works great right up until it doesn't work great, and then you go to do something, you're probably like, ah, oh, what was that obscure build step thing that I did that one time? Or you could just not use it. I mean, that is an option. Just stop spending all your time figuring out tricks and ways to make be productive, like one weird tip to be better at writing code with less bugs than that, and just learn to write code better. Like the hours you spend learning this shit, you could just learn to write code better. Look, once you get out of the adolescent phase, <laughs> you become concerned about the children of the future. We pay taxes, we get our cars registered, we write tests, we write documentation, and we use types for the children and for the future. Thank you. TypeScript. TypeScript. For the children. So can we get, is that your summary? That's my closing All statement. Alright, so your closing statement, please. Uh, yeah, you just actually reminded me of um, a thing that's, I've just forgotten then thinking about it. What are you, what's the, like, we used to we write tests and we, and, we, and we write types. I, I'm obviously not against writing tests, so if you look at any of my code, I've got huge amounts of tests, but obviously no one's trading tests for TypeScript because it doesn't work, because then you have because all the bugs you ever find are logical bugs, they're not type bugs, someone wants a type bug. I don't even know how to write a type bug. Like, what do you do? How do you even do that? Like, I'm not even kidding. I actually tried, I tried to write an example with a type error. I couldn't think of how to do it. Other than like, aggressively attempting to put the wrong types in the wrong spot. How do you accidentally even write a type bug? Yeah, just keep writing code and you know, one day you'll get there. <laughs> Once your code reaches sufficient level of complexity and scale, and you have to maintain it for that long, I just try and write simple, it's, clean, uh, logical code rather than complex, nasty C sharp. <laughs> Traumatized by C sharp. Yeah. I don't have any closing comments because I don't. Um, I don't feel like I said I slide too. I didn't think I was going to win, win this. I don't know even how people agree with me. I, and I, <laughs> like, I, it, to me, it's like it's, I find it so hard to, to even be like, oh, this is my thing because I'm just like, well, I don't even understand why you like. It's for the so children, TypeScript. Yeah. For the children. For the children. All right. Children. So let's let's get a uh, a vote. So for all those people who want to vote for TypeScript, for the children, please. For the future. Please put your hands together for Joshua. Not for me. For the children. For the future. TypeScript. Okay. And Make so JavaScript great again. For the people who are voting for JavaScript over TypeScript. Put your hands together for Corey Knight. JavaScript, TypeScript, Woo! and JavaScript. Thank you. Thank you. JavaScript and TypeScript. Super set. Yeah. So I'm not going to call that, but I think everybody had ears. So <laughs> thank you very much.